Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? It's me, Jim, and I've just unfortunately been knocked out of Callus Invitational 6 play-ins. I did make it to the finals of my bracket, very happy with my performance. I was just happy to be invited, to be honest. Really appreciate being given the opportunity to play, but didn't quite make it to the main event this time. Got knocked out by Pac, who, to be honest, kind of owned me there. Out prepped and out played, to be honest. So, kudos to him. Well done. Good luck in the main event. But, yeah, as I said, I'm very happy with my performance. I think I outdid people's expectations of me. And in my book, that's a win. I was just happy to be there. I, I can't believe I got to the finals. Just being invited was an honor. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go over my preparation, my team choices, and the replays and see how it went. Kind of fun. My first set was against Mead, who is known for being the inventor of post Mr. Mime Baton Pass. Getting Baton Pass banned again. The hero that we didn't know we needed. The man who f fixed the metagame by showing us that Baton Pass was still broken despite Mr. Mime's ban. With the, the Hypno Mead Pass, as they called it. Now, other than that, I mean, that's what everyone knows him for. He is actually a good player as well. He ladders all the time, and I have played him a lot on the ladder. He's got an ult called Kick Win. You may have seen him. I match, against up, I match up against him all the time, and I've got quite a lot of experience against him. He probably doesn't know it's me. I'm on my various ults, but I felt pretty good. I was like, I know how Mead plays a little bit. I think I, I got it. And when you're preparing, you look at the team scouter. This is a website that shows you recent replays, recent teams used that are public by a certain user. So we look up Mead and, you know, a lot of like standard TSS stuff, but a lot of weird stuff too. It's kind of hard to like specifically prepare or like counter team this guy, I think, because he brings like a lot of wacky stuff. Like this is a weird one, like Machamp, Spikeless, some kind of like mixed offense with Machamp. And then we've got... Like, what the heck's this? Breloom, Jolteon, Gyarados, Spikeless, Magless. Like, this team's insane. So, you know, Mead could bring, you know, some, like, the most... Like, this is an extremely standard Aero Spike squad right here. And then he could bring this, which just is, like... You can't possibly prepare for this. So, my, my idea was, I don't want to specifically counter-team Mead. I want to just bring stuff that's unexpected myself. Unexpected of me. I think, like, I played Retro Cup recently, and I was getting counter-teamed a lot. I was getting... So, I brought a Smeagol Spikes team, and I got matched up against full-on Superman. All Spikes immune guys, and I was like, damn it. And there was this one other guy who brought... I looked at his replay scouter. He's never used Claydor literally in his entire career. He matches up against Jim. He's playing, like, Skarm Doll... Ments. He's playing like the, the anti-spikes Claydol team that ABR uses. And I was like, what the heck? So never assume that people are like going to bring certain things based on their replay scouter too much. Because people are preparing for you and they're going to try and counter team you too. So my idea was like, I've never actually brought a mixed offense team to a tournament. There is no mixed offense team in my... In my scouter, if you look me up. So I'm like, okay. I've used this team quite a bit. It's something I've been building on the side for a while. So I was like, I could just bring this. He probably won't expect it. Uh, yeah. We've got a Curse Boomlax, which is one of the plans against Skarm. You can eliminate Skarm by cursing, and it's got enough attack to kill it after a self-destruct. I really like this particular set. We've got a Zapdos. I noticed that... Mead loves Suicune. He brings a lot of Suicune. Like, you see Suicune, 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 Suicune. He really likes Suicune. So I was like, I want to at least not get owned by Suicune. So we've got the Zapdos. Snorlax can kind of handle it. And then on the Charizard, we have Fire Ice Toxic as the coverage. Toxic can hit the waters trying to come in. If you reveal HP Ice and they think they're safe on, like, Swamp It, you can catch them with a Toxic. And Suicune is just a super common switch in against Charizard. So, Toxic owns that. 
It's not as good versus Melodic, because they have Refresh. But you at least uh, cripple them a little bit, make them have to spend a turn refreshing. You can get like Zap in or Curse Lax in, something, so... I do like the Charizard with the Toxic. It really owns its switch ends. This Charizard can theoretically, like... Beat anything that's trying to come into it. Besides maybe Melodic. But, like, Mead never uses Melodic here. I did say I don't want to, like... I don't want to over-prep for, like, oh, he never brings Melodic. But he could bring Melodic. The thing is that Melodic is an anti-mixed offense Pokemon. And Jim never brings mixed offense. So I'm like... He's not going to bring Melodic to try counter-team me. He might bring Claydol, Flygon, you know... Spike immune guys do a spikes immune plan, but he's not gonna bring freaking melodic probably unless he has a bias towards it specifically so Yeah, that was my plan and then in game one. I mean this was just This team choice ended up being insane. I go Zard on the meta here And then I immediately click toxic and Suicune comes in so I've crippled this Suicune completely Turned out to not even be a rest coon, it was an offensive sweet coon, so Calm Mind 3 attacks. And then right here, just go Snorlax. Very simple. I think he was trying to ice beam like a Celebi or something, I don't know. Or a Zapdos. I could have gone to Zapdos, I could have gone to Celebi. I have a decent amount of Zapdos usage, so fair fair enough to try and catch a Zapdos. Especially offensive sweet coon. Does like 50 or 60 to Zapdos, it's a lot. And here I just curse up. This was kind of unfortunate. For Mead right here. Even though, I mean, this matchup isn't great for him, but like, this Snorlax kind of defied logic by. The thing is, Mead could have exploded here. He might have been scared of an incoming Gengar. But the thing is, if you're Mead, you look at my team, I'm probably mixed offense. I've got a Charizard, I have a Snorlax with Curse. It's unlikely that I'm like a Skarm TSS with, a, with this kind of Snorlax set. Snorlax. I feel like with Snorlax, you either go Mag or you're like mixed offense with Focus Punch or Curse Boom. That's that's what I would say. So if you're Mead, maybe you're like, okay, he's unlikely to have Gengar. He could have, I mean, I could have Skarmory, maybe. Not even. And then I could have like Metagross. So maybe he's thinking I go to some Resist or I go to Tar and try to tank the Explode. But even then, I think you're like... Forcing out my Snorlax with Curse, and then chunking something and getting a free response, getting a free pivot. So I feel like Explode is the play there. Goes for the mash and misses it. Unfortunate. And this was a bit stupid. He goes Hera. Doesn't have Brick Break. He goes for Megahorn. So another missed chance. No elegant way to really handle this Snorlax. I could have exploded there, but I was afraid he might substitute. So I didn't go for Explode. And then I get the Slam Para. Instead of sacking... Something interesting here, by the way. My, um... My Cursed Snorlax. Check this out. This is something I noticed in-game. My Cursed Snorlax with minus one speed is 66 speed. And a Heracross Adamant Max Speed Paralyzed is 67 speed. So he would have been one speed faster than me if he had speed investment. But then I was like, that slam didn't do much. Right? That slam only did, like, I was like, is this right? The slam only did 67. And then I'm like, oh, geez. Look at the uh, Sandstorm order. Snorlax gets hit first by the Sandstorm. Snorlax is faster, so he's a bulky Heracross. And probably like 250 speed or 244 speed. So, not even a adamant full... Full speed Heracross. Can't even actually outspeed the Snorlax. Which would have outsped it by one point. Kind of a funny little thing. Doesn't really matter there. But he could have... If he was an adamant full speed Heracross, he could have finished off this Snorlax with Heracross. Yeah, he goes Mag here. I guess hoping to... I mean, you probably just suck Hera there. I don't know. Mag was kind of useless in the matchup anyway. And then in comes Suicune to finish me off with a Surf. Yeah, this one's pretty over after that. Explosive Snorlax. 
in the beginning. I went Tar here. I could have gone to Metagross, but my Tar has a Lumberry. And I can get some chip on him, allow Metagross in to finish him off. I didn't want Metagross to get paralyzed. I'm like, that's a way I could lose randomly. So, And then this was a crit. I think that if not for this crit, I would have lived the falling Earthquake. So, a bit safer to go for, for it like this. But, yeah. So, just go for the mash there, which I'm pretty sure finishes this off. Finish it off. Get Zap in. He goes for the Hail Mary Ice Beam. I was thinking of clicking Psychic there, but... Didn't want to randomly get hacked, I guess. We go meta. And then we just ice beam the, the incoming Salamence. Which, by the way, this had special attacks. So even if we see was spit F on that, that's dying. Yeah, really, really good matchup for me there. And good Snorlax RNG too. Game 2. Let, wait, wait a minute. Let me go over the team. Jim? you got to go over the team. This is the team that I brought game to, which... I don't know if this was the world's greatest choice. This is just something... I, I was just trying to build a new Cloyster team, and I was like, you know what? The team has felt good on the ladder. I think... I feel confident with this kind of style of team. It's like my bread and butter, almost. A Cloyster Spikes with, with Aero Jolt. I just felt like the team was fun, and I'm on a real mixed tar kick lately. Bro, mixed her literally twice against Mead here. So I was like, you know what? Let's go for it. I also... At this point in time, in my, in my replay scouter, not a lot of Aerodactyl usage. I'm kind of hot on Aerodactyl recently. Like, during CI, I brought it a lot. And on ladder, recently, I've been bringing it a lot. But, like, obviously, my ladder games are private. You're not going to see those on my recent results or anything, so... No one really knows that I'm, like, hot on Aerodactyl, so they might bring something Aerodactyl weak. Who knows? And that ended up being what happened versus Mead. This is... Mead brought a very Aerodactyl weak squad here. So turn one, I went for the Fire Blast, catch a random Skarmory coming in or something. And we get the Skarm. By the way, I'm usually a avid supporter of rapid spin over ice beam on cloister but on this particular team i felt like i could use the extra option versus salamence because i'm a bit weak to salamence otherwise i do have like we've got ice gengar ice jolt ice tar so there's ways i can kill it but a dd mance could randomly beat me so i'm thinking the extra form of ice beam i think helps we're slightly weak to Diddy Immense with this team, though. I decide to just uh, spike alongside him. And I make another spike. He gets Zap in. If I recall, I played this game not the greatest. I, I was playing a bit, like, predictably. I was... On this turn, I was literally... I was considering exploding versus this Zapdos. I thought that he might try to catch, like, a switch in. I was pondering exploding, but I didn't end up going for it. It felt too dangerous. But that would have been really good if I did that. And then Jolt would have no problem. But yeah, Jolt gets toxic tier. And then I made a pretty bad play here. I clicked raw. And I just get I just get chipped even more. And so I'm like, well, this Jolt is effed anyway. I'm not gonna try and like save it. Which might be also was a misplay. I just go for HP Ice. Versus that Claydol. I figure if he stays and tries to kill Jolt, I get some good chip on him. And I'm like, from my perspective, I'm like, if I chip this Claydol, that's good for me. Even if he spins. Because I want this chipped because I have an arrow in the back. If I can take out Claydol, arrow can go crazy. At this point, I wasn't sure if he had another rock resist in the back. Turned out he didn't. Reveals Blissey. And we get the T-Bolt. I just saved Jolt as a sack there. I don't need to sack it right now. And I get a free switch into Tar anyway. This is a bit better than just clicking T-Bolt and sacking because that doesn't achieve anything. I can at least get Tar in and threaten with coverage. So my, my coverage goes nuts here. I never quite pulled the trigger on the HP Grass into the Suicune switch. I, I thought he might like... I thought it was too predictable, but... Yeah, slightly hard on those turns like 
to make the right click with a mixed threat bit of gaming to be to be had I sack jolt versus the zap and now that like my zap is dead I'm pretty weak versus this zap this zap could have been a really big threat that could have won him the game but yeah I thought that I was thinking he might have like a ground type a swamp pot or something but I guess that doesn't really make sense alongside Suikin and Kaido. So this double edge, probably not the best. I thought he might also go to Claydol on the rock slide. But not like, not as if the rock slide on, into the Skarm would have done much either. He could have just very easily protected, chipped and healed back up. And then I'm locked in. He just goes Claydol. Right here, I ice beamed. I didn't think he would protect there. I thought that... Like, I'm obviously threatening to make a spike. I thought he might go to Zapdos. And I haven't revealed Ice Beam at this point. So I was like... Maybe... Maybe I can catch the Zapdos with a quick thing. And I think I'm even faster than Zapdos potentially because of... The fact that he is... Toxic. But I think if you go back here, I'm actually... Slower than it. Yeah, I don't remember if I like took notice of that at the time, but I am slower than this Zapdos as confirmed by the Sandstorm order. So. And I think right here I just make a spike. And he roars again. I get a good outcome, I get Garin. I'm trying to Ice Punch the incoming Claydol. He goes Blissey. Like, I could have doubled versus Blissey. I'm not being very comp playing very confidently. I'm playing quite safe, quite obvious. I just could do for the straight up T-Bolt. Definitely feeling the pressure a little bit in this game. But. And right here, if I went for HP Grass, I could have two hit this Suicune. I could have even gone for HP Grass here. Threaten to three hit it. Because he's probably resting, but I end up going Cloister. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I'm inviting in Skarm. He wants to play around Explode. But at least the Suicune is asleep. I mean, it can't really do much while it's asleep. So that's that's okay, even though I could have killed it. At least force it to rest is alright. Get Tarion one last time. And right here, I finally go for a Predict, I think. I Fire Blast first on the Protect. I want to go for the predict while he can just protect chip heal and then I get the ice beam which is pretty crucial chip for this versus this Claydol and I don't go for it again I could have gone for it again there I thought he might rapid spin it's it's a bit hard at this point for my Claydol to get spikes back up so I was like I think I should go Gengar he didn't rapid spin he EQ'd so if I stayed on ice beam this Claydol I mean he would have been really effed but Ends up not mattering. I get a pretty lucky Ice Punch crit right here. And... Yeah. Pretty nuts. That was really lucky. I just go for an Ice Beam again. And I did say... I was getting in Tar one last time before. But I believe now I go back to Tar... For the true last time on this heal. And... Don't remember what I clicked. Let's see. What did Jim click here? Brick Break. A simple brick break to keep the Blissey low. And then Aero comes in and it's time to spam Rock Slide over and over. And he reveals... In this moment, I let out a sigh of relief. He reveals no Metagross here, no Jirachi, no Rock Resist, no Flygon. It's just a Dug Trio. He's Aero weak, folks. Let's go. And he goes to Claydol. And I'm like, okay. Is he going to Psychic the Gar? I was like, is he going to Psychic the guy? I can Rock Slide and 2 hit this. If he clicks Psychic, that's great for me. Plus, I have a flinch chance. I feel like Rock Slide's better. But he goes for the spin. He could have actually gone for the explosion. And tried to kill this Aerodactyl. Which would have been really good for him. That would have been better than the spin. But it's actually dubious because then I have my offensive Gar. Three spikes are up. I could still actually win this. Like, Blissey can't come in again. Zapdos is threatened, so I guess either way it's alright, but 
Yeah, without... Without a great way to deal with Aero. I also flinched through this Skarm, and it turns out to not even be toxic on Skarm. I just flinch it a hundred times. A lot of people recently are going, like, toxicless on Skarms. So... Aero punishes that quite a bit. They go drill pack only. Not a bad set, but... Oh, by the way, this was... I was watching Callus's commentary of this. One moment. So I got Chloe in here. I'm threatening to kill her with Ice Beam. I was like, okay, he could take this opportunity to heal up his Bliss. Last chance he ever gets to heal up Bliss. If he gets it on an Ice Beam, there's a chance he wins because... Yeah, so going Metagross here covers if he stays Skarm and protects because, like, Metagross still can just spam Mash. The worst he can do is make another Spike. I keep it low. Every raw outcome is bad for him. Especially Aero. So, and then also it covers the switch to Bliss. So, right here, that, that, that play could have, that was a necessary play to make. Because if Bliss heals up, he could T-Wave Aero, live a hit, and... And curb the threat, but... Yeah, Metagross saved that. We boom on the zap and get... Now Cloister in for another free boom. I was wondering if I should go Guy here, but I was like... He can then go Blissey and heal, and I'm forced to explode. With Gar. So I was like, I should just go Aero. I don't know if that really mattered, but... Yeah, I don't think he's sleep talk here, so we just do it. And that's another victory for Jim. This one was a bit luckier, and I wasn't playing the best, but the matchup was just so good that it almost didn't matter. Like, he's really, really weak to Aerodactyl. So, and I did make a couple crucial plays. One of them was Ice Beam and the Doll coming in, and doubling Meta versus that Blissey that could have healed up. Those two plays clawed me back into it, where he could have perhaps... Made something happen. Uh, the Ice Punch crit was also really good because... Yeah, he had like no chance versus Aero after that with Clodal being like his only thing. But I think even still he's very weak to Aero. Like, all, all I need to do is just... Even double edge Clodal coming in. He can always go Skarm, Protect, see what I'm locked into. But... I could even just Rock Slide through Clodal. The worst it can do is, is Spin or Explode versus me. Anyway, GG's made. That was a nice opening set for Callus Invitational. And... I'm gonna go through my other sets, my preparation for those in future videos. Thank you for watching. I'm also gonna be do some, doing some commentary for the main event. Callus invited me on to to commentate some of the main event sets when that happens later in August. So stay tuned, folks. Hohen Gaiden is well coming soon. Thank you, everybody. Look at the links in the description. Subscribe and like and all that. Thank you very much. And goodbye.